Hello and welcome to Animated Anatomy. My name is Faris and now I will start my virtual dissection series of human nervous system. Of course I will start with the brain. Brain is the functioning and the coordinating center of sensation, intellectual and nervous activity of your body. A very organ that made humans differ so much than other living beings. The human brain is the only organ in human body that lacks nerves. This means that the brain feels no pain. The number of neurons in a brain is around 100 billion, which is about 15 times bigger than the total population of the humans on the Earth. It is usually told that the humans only use 10% of their brain. This is a misconception because almost every part of the human brain has a known function. It consumes about 20% of all of your energy. The energy consumed by your brain every second is around 25 joules. That equals 25 watts. It is quite enough to illuminate a light bulb. Now let's start the virtual dissection. So here we are now again. We will talk about the brain anatomy. And before all of you start telling me, hey, you already did a whole bunch of videos on neuroanatomy in the beginning. Well, true, but I'm not really satisfied with these videos. Actually, they were not in the order that I wanted them to be. So now I will try to give this a systematic overview and I will link to each one of these videos. So as I explain each structure of the brain, you will have small thumbnails here appearing and leading you directly to the video that will explain you more in detail about the certain structure that I mentioned. So let's start now by explaining in broad the parts of the brain. So right now here we are looking at the brain stem. The brain stem actually should have here a uh, colliculi illustrated and more precisely the two superior colliculi and two inferior colliculi. As you can see on this 3D model it's not illustrated clearly. That's why I made illustration and special video here explaining the brain stem and midbrain for you. On the front here you have the cerebral peduncles and that's basically here the midbrain. Then you have the pons here. This is uh, the pons. Um, if you look at the pons, at this part, it starts from here and ends there. In the middle, like of the pons, you have the uh, basilar sulcus. It's called basilar sulcus because in this sulcus right here, you have the basilar artery going. I will talk about the basilar artery in this video and how the circular villus here comes. Uh, the existence and the meaning of this uh, circle of villus. What does it do and how do these arteries supply the brain with blood? I've also explained the pons and medulla oblongata in one of my videos. You can watch that video as well. Now you can see here that they are the you can see for example this is the cranial nerve this here as well as the cranial, cranial nerve. So those are the nerves coming right here from the medulla oblongata and the pons and you know there are a lot of nuclei inside here there that these nerves come from and in my software I explain each nuclei I illustrated each nuclei in 3D and how these nerves are actually arising from these nuclei but let's get back to our lesson let's not drift away from the subject now the next part of the brain I would like to mention is the cerebellum, the little brain. It actually does not belong to the brain stem. Now in these four videos here you can actually learn every little detail about cerebellum anatomy. I have illustrated it and explained it. Now the strongest clues that a function of the cerebellum have come from examining the consequences of damage to it. Animals and humans with this function show above all problems with motor control on the same side of the body as the damaged part of the cerebellum. They continue to be able to generate motor activity but it loses precision producing erratic uncoordinated or incorrectly timed movements. Now I'll remove the cerebellum, I will remove the well the brainstem and we want to look up what we have there. Well I will remove also the telencephalon so we can take a closer look in here. Now we still cannot see the next part of the brain that I want to explain. I removed 
uh, the cerebellum and the brainstem. Now let's remove these structures here as well. And finally, we can see, uh, we, well, right now I have just removed the basal ganglia. And this here is the caudate nucleus. I'll remove that as well. We can see a whole lot of here. This thing here you see is the corpus callosum. It's basically a bunch of connections between the right and the left hemisphere. But here, the other thing, that's the thalamus. And that exactly belongs to the next part of the brain I wanted to mention, and that was the diencephalon. The diencephalon, you can watch many videos about diencephalon on my channel. So basically, you have the thalamus, and here is the hypothalamus. There is also the epithalamus. Now, this model is, uh, well, it's not really good, and... Um, I created a one other model here that's much better. Here you can see, for example, how the, 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 the colliculi that I was telling you about. And you can see on the front the uh, cerebral peduncles. You can also see the pons and the sulci, the sulcus here much better. You can also see the uh, ventricle, the fourth ventricle, how it looks like. The fourth ventricle is actually a space filled with cerebral spinal fluid. There's the entire ventricular system. This is the system in the brain filled with uh, this spinal fluid. Look, you have here, for example, this, this, this ventricle. And then there is a small hole here up there. And it goes all the way up. And then guess what? It exits here. Down there, you have the third ventricle, OK? And this third ventricle is um, actually connected to the lateral ventricles further. But that's a whole other question and a whole other lesson that you can watch here. Uh, then again, I've explained the thalamus and the epithalamus. Here you can see the pineal body, for example. And that also belongs to the diencephalon. Now, one thing I, now one thing I wanted to say about the thalamus here the thalamus is kind of like a gateway. It has a lot of connections within other structures in, in the diencephalon, outside of diencephalon. And look, the thalamus is also connected. The two thalami are connected between each other, the left and the right one with the interthalamic commissure. So it acts like a switch. Look, you can have the entire things prepared and the signals, and they antagonize each other or agonize each other. And then they either um, antagonize or agonize the thalamus, and from there you get the certain disease or disorder, like Parkinson's disease or, or hyperkinetic disorders. Uh, this is the pathological part right now, but this thalamus is really important, and that's why it acts as a gateway. You have the entire bunch of structures over there, and all of them intertwine, and then they come to the thalamus, and from there the, uh, the, the you, you, you whether it's antagonized or agonized or whatever, you get the actual uh, good function or you get the pathological properties. Now we have to explain the cerebrum and the cerebrum is left and well, cerebrum consists of basal ganglia, that's basically the structures I was removing here, and it also consists of a brain cortex with the underlying white matter. Now, to learn more about how this cortex looks like, to learn more about these basal ganglia and everything else, you should check out my lessons that I created about the sections, the dissections of the brain, the, the, the frontal and the horizontal section of the brain. Now, the thing not to forget is to mention the forebrain. Well, the forebrain is what diencephalon and the cerebrum create together. Remember, not the cerebellum, but the cerebrum. Okay, cerebrum and the diencephalon, together they create the forebrain. One more thing I would like to mention is the cranial nerves, and you can watch that lesson here. I've explained all of these cranial nerves in details. Now, if we bring back all of our structures, I want to explain you something, and maybe the last in this video, and that is the cortex. Look, on cortex you have the gyri, okay? This is the gyrus here. 
and then you have the sulci right here okay this is the sulcus and here is the sulcus so we use these sometimes to define the borders on the cortex and define the areas on the cortex what that means is that the sulci and these uh, gyri also have names and I've explained that in this video here you can watch the video here one more thing is that there are lobes of the brain and not just the, the gyri and the sulci have all the names look not all of them have names only the important ones and that are present in most of the hu human population now lobes should be present in entire human population in every human they should be if they're not then it's pathological and to explain you uh, certain things here I shall start by illustrating them and then let's start with the frontal lobe here is the frontal lobe okay this should be somehow the frontal lobe look the frontal lobe plays a large role in voluntary movement it houses the primary motor cortex with, which regulates things like walking and punching. The function of the frontal lobe involves the ability to project future consequences resulting from the current actions. So what you do right now, right here, what comes later actually. And also the choices between good and bad actions uh, or better and best actions. To override and suppress uh, socially unacceptable responses, sort of to say. So it also serves to determine uh, the similarities and differences between things and events, right? Okay, what happened today and what happened yesterday? Was it similar or was it not similar? And should I do this and is this socially acceptable? And of course, the um, the frontal lobe also plays a uh, an important role in retaining longer term memories which are not task based these are more often memories associated with emotions derived from input from the brain's limbic system and that's how we learn you know that the brain limbic system is actually the emotional part of the brain i talked about it in a video about the emotions and lobotomy procedure right here now the thing is you see the limbic system is like part of the brain for the emotions okay and it's connected with the frontal lobe and that's how we learn if if something was bad it, it happened to us we learn okay from from our next action this could happen again it was bad we don't want to do it it's not socially acceptable and this and that and sometimes people have this they have problems with their limbic system okay their limbic system doesn't function very good so they either cry or they smile they behave completely socially unacceptable and then what we used to do with the procedure called lobotomy we simply used to cut all these uh, connections of the frontal lobe and the limbic system this was horrible the patient appeared to be normal. The patient stopped crying, for example. The patients appeared to be normal. But later they develop horrible and terrible pathological properties. They were not able to feel emotions properly. They were not able to interact or be creative, uh, predict what's going to happen or what's not going to happen. They, it was really hard. They were basically handicapped by the actions and the, Dr. Freeman he did this in America uh, on a begin in the early beginning of the 20th century and later he was uh, prohibited from uh, continuing with this procedure uh, let's not go too much into that that you can watch the video right here if you're, if you're interested about it let's stick to our lobes okay the next lobe I wanted to explain is the parietal lobe right here and the occipital lobe the occipital lobe right here and we also had the temporal lobe and the temporal lobe was right here now the occipital lobe has the cortex that is responsible for receiving the sensory input the visual cortex for example and then the processing of the signal actually happens in the temporal lobe the temporal lobe is also important for 
language recognition and new memories. Actually, it's also important for the visual memories. Now I understand the basic anatomy of human brain. In my next video, I will explain the blood supply to the brain, and you can watch that video here. You can also watch my previous video here. If you like my videos and want to purchase my software, you can go to my website animatedanatomy.com. If you don't have money to purchase my software, well, I upload regularly free content, so make sure you subscribe here. Thank you.